All right, now we're ready to install our new carburetor. I want you to take note of something first, though. Edelbrock carburetors are what they call a square bore carburetor. What we took off was a quarter jet carburetor, which is a spread bore. If we try and just install our new carburetor with just a standard gasket, you can see clearly right here we're going to have vacuum problems and that this gasket does not fit this intake manifold. So what we're going to use is an adapter plate. This right here adapts square bore carburetors to quarter jet manifolds. And without this, you're going to have nothing but troubles. You're going to have all kinds of vacuum leaks. Just so you know what a square bore manifold looks like, in case you do have one, they look like this. And of course the gasket fits very nicely. Now our adapter kits come complete. They come with the adapter plate, the necessary gaskets, and all the mounting hardware. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. Start with the gasket. And of course this has got to go down on the correct way in the manifold. And we're going to install the mounting screws. When you're tightening these, don't cinch one down and then the others. Just snug them up a little bit first, and then go around to each one, and just give it a little tighter and a little tighter until it's nice and snug. All right, next we're going to install the four mounting studs. Now we install the top gasket. And we're ready to drop the carburetor on. But before you do, just kind of give it a once over. Make sure there's no packing debris inside or anything like that. And take note that there's a vacuum port on the back side. Now the front side is for the PCV valve. The back side is for power brakes. Now our car here uses power brakes coming off the intake manifold. So we're not going to be using this port. So you want to be sure you block that off. You're going to have a huge vacuum leak. Included with the carburetor, you get a bag with all kinds of little parts in it. And included in the parts is the plug for this back port here. I've put a little thread sealer on there. Once that's done, we're ready to drop it on. Now we're ready to install the washers and the nuts. Once those are all on, we give them a snug down with a wrench. And again, don't just cinch down on one and not the others. Just go around evenly and give them all a little bit of hand tightness. And sometimes it's a good idea to go in a cross pattern and just a little tighter each time until they're snug down. Now the carburetor's on, we're ready to do the fuel lines. Well, the first thing we want to do is get rid of the old fuel line. They get old, dry, and cracked, and you're just asking for a leak. So we're going to get rid of that first. Now, to help make your installation go smooth and easy, we offer a universal fuel line kit. It's a part number 8135. And what comes in this kit is a fuel filter. We have the rubber fuel line. We have two different size ferrule fittings to go onto your existing steel line coming from your fuel pump. We have a 5 16ths and a 3 8 and, of course, all the hose clamps that you'll need. We do offer a filter with two different sizes of nipples on it for 5 16 or 3 8 Now the trick is, you don't want to try and take a 5 16 fuel line and shove it on the carburetor and as hard as you can and try and get it on there. All you're doing is ballooning this out and you're just asking for a fuel leak. Fuel leak and a hot exhaust don't mix real good. You're asking for a barbecue. So make sure you're using the right size fuel lines for your vehicle. Now this car is equipped with a 3 8 steel fuel line coming from the fuel pump. So we selected a 3 8 ferrule fitting that's supplied in the kit. And basically these are just a nipple for the rubber fuel line to attach to and a crush sleeve inside that seals around the steel fuel line. So we start by taking the nut and ferrule assembly, slipping it over the steel fuel line. Make sure it's on good. Then we simply screw in the, the fitting. and then give it a good cinch down. And that'll prevent any leaks.
Now that's ready to go. Now our Edelbrock carburetors come with a fuel fitting, comes straight out the side. This is standard equipment. And we can take the fuel line and stick it on here. Just because we give you two or three feet of fuel line doesn't need to use all of it. So let's cut it to size. And we're going to do something a little more than this. Rather than use this fitting, we offer a, what we call a banjo fitting. It's a 90 degree banjo fitting, number 8089. And what this does is it lets us reroute the fuel line to a little better angle. Now what comes in the kit is a banjo fitting and a couple of gaskets. So what we're going to do is place a gasket on one side, put the fitting on, and place the second gasket on the other side. Now it's ready to install. And we'll just give that a little cinch. You don't want to over tighten these. Just good and snug. It's plenty fine. Now we'll be able to route the fuel line up underneath and straight up in. So we're going to cut it to size. Install a new clamp. Put it on and give it a tighten. Now you want to be sure that your fuel line doesn't interfere with any linkages over here. Ours goes underneath and around and doesn't interfere with anything. So that's all nice and routed really good. Something very important about installing a new carburetor, our Edelbrock carburetors do not have built-in fuel filters. Some OEM carburetors and even some aftermarket carburetors have filters built in. And I can't stress enough how important a fuel filter is. You've got old rust scale in the gas tank, you've got old fuel lines, sometimes they rust, sometimes the neoprene lines disintegrate and little pieces come out. And you really need to filter that stuff out because if it gets in the carburetor, it'll cause a needle and seats inside to get clogged up and the fuel won't be able to shut off and it just starts flooding all over the place. So we really need to install a good fuel filter. And mind you, before we start, fuel filters are directional. So if you look on the end of it, it'll say in on one side and there's nothing on the other. So it lets you know that this side is the inlet. So when we place it in there, we want to be sure that the fuel pump is flowing this way to the carburetor. So we'll come in and find a place on the fuel line here to place this fuel filter. I kind of like this spot right here. Now in your car you might find another location, but this for our car, this is a nice spot. Here's the inside. And just make sure that tucks out of the way so it doesn't interfere with any linkage or any electrical items or anything like that and everything should be good.